Good morning, everybody. Thank you for being here on short notice. As you can see, we are joined by Philly's managing partner, John Middleton, and Philly's executive vice president, David Buck. We'll start with opening remarks from them and then open it up for your questions. John. I'm not sure how I'm going to get through this. Today's a really hard day. Um, a very sad day and a painfully sad one, beginning with the Phillies family, but extending even to Philadelphia. Uh, though you wouldn't know it from my appearance at this moment, it's also intertwined with this sorrow, should be rejoicing. This is a man who lived a great life. He is an example to all of us. And we should all be grateful that he was in our lives and for all the ways he touched not only us personally, but literally thousands and thousands of other people. Phillies people, ALS people, the greater Philadelphia region, and in fact, um, baseball. He, last week, he was awarded an honor by the Fairmount Park Conservancy, and the person giving the award, said he has accomplished something that nobody else has in the history of Philadelphia, and that's to be successful and to be loved by everyone. And that's an apt description of David. He was loved by everyone, uh, including the baseball world. This is a, a very sad day for, for baseball, too. Um, I'm sorry. Um, I think I just need to stop right now. Dave. I think, plain and simply, David was one of the greatest human beings I've ever met in my life. He was a wonderful, wonderful man. He did so much for all of us. I remember when Harry Callis passed away, David said, we lost our voice. Well, with David's passing, we lost a very, very big piece of our heart. He's an awesome, awesome guy. We'll open up for your questions now. John. Could you tell us about Dave and how he always looked out for the fan, um, the ticket sale, tickets, and, and everything that he did in, in looking out for his customer and things? And John, I, I think I would broaden my answer to just than just fans. Um, David looked out for everybody fans, players, their wives, their kids. Um, the spouses of the people who worked here at the organization, their children. Um, I can't tell you how many weddings and funerals David attended over the last 40 years. It was remarkable. He always had time for people. He always cared about them. And he loved fans. I mean, he loved baseball. Baseball fans loved baseball. It was a great relationship that he had with his fans. He, he, he enjoyed talking to them. He enjoyed their questions. Um, he's, but he... He was just, he just loved people. As David said, he's one of the great, great human beings. Um, and he kind of put, puts a lie to the old Leo DeRocher statement that nice guys finish last, because he finished first. John, John, first of all, I just want to say I'm sorry for your loss. When, when you think about David, and you talk to former players and even current players, you always talked about Fam they always talked about family first. Can you talk about just, just how he instilled that in this organization from, from the players up to the front office that the family was first? Well, I think it really begins with caring and compassion um, and, and genuine interest in people. Um, I'm not kidding. David knew everybody's spouse. He knew everybody's child, their children's names. Um, he even knew the spouses of the children and the grandchildren's names. I mean, he, he, he just made it his business because he loved people. He enjoyed being with them. But he, and when you are around somebody who cares the way David did, um, it, it just rubs off on you. I mean, he, he was one of those rare people who made the other people around him a better person. You wanted to be better because when you were in his presence, you just felt kind of the goodness of his heart. David talked about losing a piece of his heart, our hearts. We lost a piece of our soul as well with David. Oh, John, I'm not sure when you actually got to know David. I don't know if it was through your father when he was first part of this. But can you think of maybe a couple of things 
that are indelible in your mind when it comes to you and what David did for you when you joined the family of the Phillies? You, you, you speak, well, to answer the first part of your question, Howard, I knew David when we started here. I mean, I was as much a part of this um, operation as my father was. Um, so I got to know David from day one. Um, and I've got obviously spent really virtually the next 25 years with him in, in all kinds of different capacities. Um, you know, I, I, I think in terms of what he did to bring us in as partners was, was primarily just be David, um, be open, be you know, inclusive, wanting to know opinions, trying to work with people. Um, look, I think great leadership is ultimately extraordinarily personal. It's about one person and another person or one person and a, and a group of people. And David connected with people on an emotional level as well as an intellectual level exceptionally well. I echo David, he's just one of the finest human beings I've had the privilege of, of knowing in my life. Yes, one. Uh, this question is for either both or either one of you, and I, I apologize. I want to try to phrase it exactly the right way. The last few years of David's life, what he was dealing with was very apparent to anyone who saw him or heard him speak. I'm wondering if either of you ever discussed with him or got any insight into his seemingly lack of fear in, in dealing with that and willing to be as open and public as he was you know, in various settings, banquets, events, things of that nature, because I think for some people it might be, they might be reluctant to, to be as he was. In the I think the last four or five years almost sum him up perfectly. Like, it was very difficult for him. And throughout this whole process, he cared more about all his coworkers in the back than about him. And I'm looking at Adele and John right there, and we get updates all the time. And we're not even sure they were complete updates because he wouldn't talk about himself. We couldn't, we're like, are you okay? And he's like, I'm, I'm fine and so forth. He just wanted to make sure, he, he taught us how to be better teammates till the very end and, and how to treat everybody properly. And it was amazing with all the pain he was going through. He loved opening day. He literally used every ounce, last ounce of his energy to get here at opening day. And he's been in the hospital since the day after opening day because he wanted to be here with all his coworkers. It wasn't about him at all. He wanted to <coughs> share everything till the end. John? What? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. John uh, Clark first and then John Rollins. Go ahead. How much did you want him to be able to experience the announcement that the All-Star game was coming back here and because of all the efforts that he put into to doing that? Well, um, that was the primary reason why baseball moved up the announcement date, frankly. I mean, Rob was intent on you know, letting David. Rob told David privately um, after he informed me that the All-Star game was coming in 2026, but Rob wanted to kind of make sure that David would, could participate and enjoy that, that moment. Chair? And one more. I'm sorry. Sure. Sure. The day after the announcement, Rob and Pat Courtney got to go visit with David. Yeah, and that was they came in early to do that, and that was very important. That was great. Very special, kind of a capstone to David's career. You've described a man that, as you, as you described him, is part of the soul of this organization, and he helped form it. The collegial atmosphere here, it came naturally to him. Did he ever discuss with you? his mindset as to why that was important for him. I know there was a quote in the paper today about his mother sort of admonished him to, to treat people decently, treat people the way you would want to be treated, an a admonition of the golden rule. Did he ever talk about that? Uh, he didn't talk about it, but he, there wasn't a phony bone in his body. And, and I mean that seriously. He cared about everybody here. And he, John was mentioning about he knew your, your kids and then when they got married and so forth. We were, <laughs> Till the very end, last summer, you know, we hire a lot of summer interns. And I remember clearly he comes up, someone had been there like three days, and he goes, what's her name? And I, I know a lot of people, but I didn't know <laughs> her name. And he goes, that's Julie, she's from Temple, I get to know her. Like, <laughs> that's what he did always, and it just, it was special. 
Are there any more questions for these gentlemen? John. We would always see him keeping score. Um, how much did he love the game of baseball and what, what it represented? I don't know that you could describe that. I mean, it was, um, I mean, he, he loved it. I, I, you, you wouldn't want to call it an obsession because that, I think, is maybe has connotations that aren't, aren't I mean, this was a pure love of the game. And the people who were in it, the players, the umpires, Everything, um, you know, the front office on the other team. I mean, he is just, he, he loved everything about the game. And he just loved being here. And today, as David said, he put, he put his maximum effort to make sure he got here for opening game this year. Thank you, John. Thank you, Dave. Yes, uh, we are going to have... Uh, the next gentleman to come and speak with us. Charlie, Bo, Mick. I guess we'll do it the same way. Charlie, start start with you, Mickey, and, and Larry, with your thoughts, and then once again open it up for your questions. Yeah, today's a today's a very sad day because uh, when I sit here and I listen to what people say about him, everything they say is true. Uh, he was definitely uh, someone who was very dedicated uh, to his work, his uh, the people that was that was in our organization city of Philadelphia, and of course, of definitely the Phillies. He was always, definitely, I looked at him as a fan at times. I used to tell him, I said, you're just a fan. <laughs> and, he, and he would look at me, he said, I'm more than that. And, and basically he was. But uh, what I really saw in him last couple of years was in his health, he, uh, I gotta say, he's a big fighter. And I admire everything about him because he used to want to come to work. That's all he wanted to do. He wanted to be around the people that he liked, and uh, just like Mr. Uh, Dave Buck said, you know, like he, uh, you know, like he, the things that uh, mattered to him was uh, someone else, other people, and his family. Uh, definitely, uh, David was a very, very special guy. He, he gave me my job as a manager of the Phillies. He, you know, like I definitely thank him for that. He, and it, uh, you know, like it showed a lot of confidence in me, and I appreciate that. And I was, I was also glad that we won a World Series in 208. Now, when I look back, just, just the comment today, because uh, I'm, uh, I'm glad David was part of uh, a huge part of that, and he's been a big part of, of uh, the Phillies for forever, and he's going to be definitely missed. And I give my condolences to uh, uh, his wife Lynn, and I, you know, I and I wish her the best. And I'm sure that it's a hard time, but uh, I imagine the memories would definitely help help a little bit. And uh, like I said, you know, like I'm, uh, he 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 was a big fighter, and he and he he loved everything he did, and he he fought all the way up to the end. Mickey, you were one of David's favorite players. a sad, sad day. Um, I love that man so much. Um, I know Dave and John touched on it, but it was truly amazing how many people's lives he touched. And, you know, I'd, I'd be with him and he stopped the security guard and, and I know they touched on it, but he'd know that the security guard's wife and children. And then the front office guy would come and he'd ask how the wife and he knew their children and and then a custodian and he knew the wife and he knew the children. I mean, it was amazing. It was utterly amazing. I, I meet someone and 20 minutes later I'm like, I forgot their name already. And 
it's unbelievable. And um, I remember in spring training this year, he had a treatment in Philadelphia. And uh, the next day, he was at a sponsor's dinner that night because he knew how important sponsors were to this organization. Um, it's the kind of man he was. And after I retired um, and spent some time away from the Phillies, Dave's the reason I came back because um, I knew what kind of organization he ran and the relationships I had in this organization, and Dave's the biggest part of it. Well, you go back as far as anybody here with, uh, with David. Uh, boy, early memories, uh, he never changed. No, this, this can be hard for me. Um. He's, he's the best human being I've ever been around, ever. He was like a father to me. I'm sorry. We're losing a lot of Philly family every year. And this one hurts really, really bad. Um, matter of fact, uh, Charlie and I were in Reading. And Dave's probably mad at Charlie and I right now because we went and watched the Phillies last night, the Reading Phillies. We were supposed to watch him this morning, and if Dave knew that we came back to Philly and missed that morning game, he would be very upset at us, believe me. Uh, so I, I hope he understands that uh, we'll be back tomorrow to watch another morning game in Reading. But uh, this man, uh, I don't know, words can't express what he meant to the organization, what he meant to me. Uh, he knew everybody's first and last name. If you were a, a vendor selling popcorn or beer, if you were a clubhouse guy doing the wash, if you were a ticket holder, they treated you like you were the king. Nobody, nobody had to feel bad around day. He made you feel like the greatest person in the world. And we, you know, we talk about analytics now. In 2001, when I took over the team, uh, he came down one game and he says, man, he says, you're really doing a good job. He says, but I'm going to ask you something and I hope you don't take it too bad. He says, please don't bunt anymore. He says, bunny, those don't work. And this was in 2001. <laughs> As we fast forward to 2019, Dave was far ahead of the curve, believe me. He knew exactly what was going on. Um, this guy had more fight in him than anybody I've ever met. And uh, to get that call this morning from Debbie, I, I knew something was wrong. And uh, like I said, this organization is not going to be the same without David. And uh, he taught players respect, to respect the uniform. He taught players to give back to the community. That was important to him. You don't just play the game. Treat people. They come out to watch you play, go to their functions, have charity events. He taught everybody how to act like a big leaguer on and off the field. I've been with the Dodgers, the Yankees, Seattle in coaching capacities. And this, this organization is a top organization in my mind. Uh, we went through some tough times. And David was through the good times, the bad times. He never wavered. He always said, hey, everything's going to be fine. Don't worry about it. We're going to get players here. Eventually, we're going to turn this around. Uh, but he loved baseball. And we would have meetings. And in those meetings, Dave would write down everybody. If you went over a player, well, this guy can do this. This guy can't do that. He would write everything down. And if you said something in February during your meetings, and then he saw you in June. He said, well, hey, Bo, uh, remember that meeting in, in February? You said this guy, he says, well, he seems like he's turned the corner here. And I, I'm looking at him like, God, I can't remember, believe that he remembered what we said on that particular <laughs> player. But um, all these minor league facilities we have now, the way they, they treat the people when they come through those gates, that's a reflection on Dave Montgomery.
Dave went to all the minor league affiliates, treated those guys like they were kings, told them how to treat fans, went down on the field, talked to the players. Uh, like I said, this is a sad day, and um, hopefully Dave's, I know he's going to be in a better place. But I think what we can do now for him, and it, the, the team, thanks to John and the rest of the owners, they're in a good position. Uh, we can win a World Series for Dave this year. I think that would be the greatest thing in the world for him. And right now I know Lynn and the kids and the grandchildren are going through tough times. But Dave, he'd probably be very embarrassed that we're all here talking about him. That's what kind of individual he was. Everything I did in baseball, I owed to Dave Montgomery starting in 1971. He came in 71, I came in 70. He was always there saying, hey, everything's going to be okay. You're going to be fine. And then when I took over as manager, hey, just get us headed in the right direction. There was always words of encouragement, no matter how bleak it looked outside. Uh, David found a ray of sunshine, and that's what I remember most about him. But I can't think of any individual that had a bad word to say about David Montgomery, the greatest person I ever met in my life. Your questions. John. Um, in his fight, in his battle, it seemed like he, he never would take questions about him. And how courageous was the fight he had and not ever it being about himself, even though things had changed and, and, and things like that? Yeah, he would come, like our meetings. Like he'd come, he'd just walk in the door and come sit down in meetings like everything else. And it was, it was never about David. And he was there because he wanted to be there and he wanted to keep up with things. And also he, he liked, uh, like Bo was talking about, he, he liked to be in there with you and he liked to hear what you had to say. He always gave you attention. And uh, uh, actually you would never, uh, if you didn't know, you would never think he did, uh, that he had a health problem from the way he would act because he, that's who he was. And uh, when I say he's a fighter, that's, that's what I really admire about him was, was how he handled the things and, and how, he, how he wanted to go on with his life. And he played it, I think he played it out just like he wanted to. I think that he uh, had bad health problems and, he, and eventually, you know, like uh, he fought as hard as he could and uh, that's who he was. He cared about everybody. Yeah, every time I saw him the last couple of years, especially since I got this new role in the organization, obviously I'd ask him how he's doing, and quickly he would turn it to to me and say, are you, are you happy with your new role? Is there anything I can do? Uh, do I need to talk to someone? Things like that. It was, it was never about him. Yeah, I agree with Mick and, and Charlie both. Every time he said, how do you feel, he goes, don't worry about me. He says, uh, have you been going out and looking at our prospects? And I'd say, yeah, and he goes, well, what do you think about uh, Garcia? And I'm going, this guy played in the Gulf Coast League, and he's talking about Garcia already. He's a shortstop. And I'm going, David, you're unbelievable. He says, well, I know, I know the guy's coming up, believe me. And I said, I know you know the guy's coming up, so I better do my job. You know, and he laughed, and he says, no more how are you doing, Dave? He says, I'm doing fine. He says, you just go out and take a look at our young kids. That's the kind of person he was. It, 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 was, ever, it was never about him, ever, ever. I believe uh, John Rollins, please. Oh, I'm sorry, Matt. Thanks, Scott. Um, Charlie, after you guys won the World Series in 2008, the, at, after the parade, David started a Charlie chant among the crowd. I'm just curious, what did that moment mean to you? And, and Larry had talked about how much support David was when he was a manager. What kind of support was he for you, especially in those first few years that weren't, weren't too easy? I think uh, I'll go back to when I got hired. I think I was, I think that I was not the most popular guy around, <laughs> and I think it uh, the fact that uh, you know Dave Dave Montgomery always had confidence in me. You know, like it, our conversations, you know, like he always showed me how strong uh, that he felt about uh, who I was, and uh, and and you know, like how our team was playing and. Uh, most of the time, you know, like, and there was ups and downs like everything, but at the same time, David was always there, 
and he and he always uh, I, I think he David Montgomery was a great evaluator of things, not only just players and things, but people and and also the business part of the game. I think that he's uh, uh, he was a very dedicated guy, especially to everything that he surrounded. And uh, really, I'm gonna miss him. I'm gonna miss things that our conversations that we used to have. And uh, he he kept up with everything. Are there any other questions? I think the one thing about Dave, when you're one of the owners, like of the Phillies, he cared about the other professional teams. He cared about the Flyers. He cared about the Sixers. He cared about the Eagles. He wanted all the teams to win. Um, he always talked about the Big Five basketball. You know, he went to the University of Penn. He loved Big Five basketball. And when I first came over here, he, he you know, when I was a lot younger, he was selling tickets. You know, he always would say, did you ever go to a Big Five basketball game? I said, no. He said, you got to go. You got to go to the Palestra. If you never go to the Palestra, he says, you got to go to the Palestra before you get a cheesesteak. And uh, so eventually I got to the Palestra, and, and that atmosphere, Dave was right, as usual. It's, it's unbelievable to watch a college basketball game there. But he wanted other teams to win. It wasn't just about the Phillies. He wanted every sports team here to be successful. And on his philosophy was, and I know in 80, every team got to the finals, uh, the Sixers, the Eagles, the Flyers, uh, and of course the Phillies, we, we were the only team to win, but all the other teams got to the finals. And he said, that's what makes this city so great. He said, we all got to where we wanted to go. He says, one of us finished the, 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 the deal off, he says, but the fact the city was a buzz for a whole year, he was very happy about that. And, and it wasn't just about hey, the Phillies won tonight. We don't care about what the Eagles did. He wanted everyone to be successful. Would anyone else like to add anything? Charlie, Mick, Bo, thank you all thank very you. much. Um, just close this, I guess, by saying that David would always say Philadelphia is our first name. Phillies is our last. Here's both. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>